Hey guys, today we're going to do a trailhead. We're going to start playing around with socket queries. And for this trailhead unit, we're going to create an Apex class that returns contacts based on incoming parameters. So here I have my trailhead playground open. I'm going to open the developer console. Cool. So for this challenge, you have to create a class that is a method accepting two strings. The method searches for contacts that have a last name matching the first string and a mailing posting code matching the second. It gets the ID and name of those contacts and returns them. So the Apex class must be called contact search. So we're going to create a new Apex class. We're going to call it contact search. Okay, and it's going to generate this class. So the Apex class must have a public static method called search for contacts. And we know it's going to return a list of contacts. So the method's going to look something like this. Public static list contact. And it has to be called search for contacts. And it takes two strings as parameters. It takes a last name and a mailing postal code. So we're just going to say a string. Uh, last name and string mail post code. Cool, I'll make this a bit smaller so you guys can see. So this is what the method looks like. Um, so it's public static, it returns a list of contacts, it's called search for contacts, and it takes two strings as parameters. Cool. So now that we have that done, we're ready to start writing our socket query. So what do we need to do? So this socket query is going to return contacts. It's going to return um, a contact name, last name, and postal code. So a really nice thing we can do here is we can actually text out socket queries here. So we can actually say select ID, name, last name, mailing postal code from contact. And if we execute this socket query, we can see that these are the records that are returned. So this is a really nice tool um, just for testing out socket queries. Um, so it's really, really useful. So we can actually use this now. So if I copy this um, and go back into my code, here I know we're going to need a list of contacts. We're just going to call it contacts equals. And whenever you're um, using a socket query in Apex, you're going to enclose it in the square brackets. So now if I paste in this code again, or this socket query, um, it's just getting a bit big so I'm gonna make that smaller and um, so you should be able to see this whole line so we have a list of contacts we're selecting an ID a name a last name and a mailing postal code from contact so this is going to get all the contacts and get these fields and um, but we don't want to get all the contacts we only want to get the contacts where the last name and the mail postcode matches these two parameters so I guess a good thing we could do to actually test this, first of all, um, is to go back in to our socket query results. And we can actually say here where last name equals, and we're just going to put in here Davis, because we can see that this record um, has a last name of Davis. So if we execute this socket query and it works, then we know we're along the right lines. Yeah, so we can see that it just returns this one record. So we know that's what we need to do. So now back in our code, I might bring this down a line just so you can see. Um, what we need to do now is put in this where clause. Um, but we're not gonna hard code in where last name equals to Davis. We're gonna say, first of all, where um, last name equals, and whenever we're using a variable here, we're just gonna say colon. So we can say colon, last name and this is going to use this variable here so it's going to say select 
the ID, the name, the last name, and the mailing postcode from contact, where last name equals this variable last name, and mailing postal code equals, again we're using a variable, and it's going to be this variable here, so I'm going to say mail post code. Okay, I'm going to save that, and we can see there's no errors in that line. The error we're getting here is because we're not returning anything yet. So all we need to do is return this list of contacts. So return contacts is the name of it. Cool. So if we save now, this error should go away, and it does. Um, so now to test this out, we're going to look at our contacts list. So we can see we have some contacts. And we're going to test out this method to try to get back this, uh, this Jack Rogers. So to do this, we're going to say debug open anonymous window. And here we just want to call this class. I'm just going to say contact search dot search for contacts. We're going to take, a, we're going to take two strings, last name and mail postcode. And we just want to use this Jack Rogers. So we can say Rogers and the mail postcode is 27215. So we're just going to execute this and see if our um, method and our class actually work before we um, before we check the challenge. So we're just going to ex execute this. We can see that it's running, it's running. Um, and if we Okay, so we're not putting anything out, so we're not actually going to know. Um, but if I was to do the same thing again, and here, say system dot debug found contacts, and then we can just say plus contacts, and save that again. And again, we're going to debug, open this window, execute this. And it should open our log, and this time we should actually find out whether it found any. So we can see found contacts, and yeah, it found this record. Cool. So now that we know that we verified it's actually working before running the test, um, we can actually go here and check the challenge, and it should all be all be okay. Cool. So as you can see, um, we completed that successfully, and I just thought I'd show you some of those useful tips. Um, into testing whether what you're doing is working as you're doing it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.